phase one reopening in New York City is going to look like. The city says up to 400,000 employees are expected to go back to work when cleared businesses begin to reopen. No exact date set, though. Social distancing of six feet, reduced occupancy to no more than 50%, and PPE all required. Mandatory health screenings for employees, like temperature checks, also required. The city will also enforce the rules with regular inspections. Another level of protection, an executive order now allows businesses to deny entry to anybody who does not have a face covering. And this comes as only 6% of people who were tested in the city tested positive for COVID-19, the lowest daily rate since the outbreak began. The state is now focusing on hard-hit neighborhoods like these, where almost half the people tested are positive for COVID antibodies. This was Andrew Sifis Live with what else we could see in the coming weeks. Andrew? Right, Chuck. Now, a lot of businesses have been asking us when exactly they can open up. The mayor has said the first two weeks of June. Well, the first week of June begins just four days from now, and all signs are that a more likely opening would be the second week of June. But even then, a lot of folks have unanswered questions. It still could be weeks before John Hellings opens up his clothing store. But after losing 70% of his business since March... I feel it's about time we can responsibly social distance in our store. If we can be responsible in large stores that are selling food and apparel, I certainly think we can do it in a small store. People are ready for this, but they need to know it will be safe. Today, Mayor Bill de Blasio wouldn't say exactly when the city gets the green light for manufacturing and curbside retail. But he estimated up to 400,000 people going back to work. A key challenge, mass transit. Trains and buses now cleaner than before the pandemic, but crowd control uncertain. Also unresolved, how to help restaurants. Not allowed to serve customers at outdoor tables until phase three of reopening. Today, the city council pitched a new law which would allow outdoor dining on sidewalks and key streets as shown in these renderings. On today's Zoom call with city lawmakers, Harlem restaurant owner Melba Wilson. When restaurants can't reopen, communities can't reopen. So when a restaurant dies, it's not just that physical space. It's a domino effect. New York City is a, a more difficult situation. Governor Cuomo in Brooklyn today giving retailers the power to turn away customers who refuse to cover their faces. And today I'm signing an executive order that authorizes private businesses to deny entrance to people who do not wear a mask or a face covering. And Cuomo enlisted the help of two Brooklyn celebrities Rosie Perez and Chris Rock. We're soldiers for New York. This is, you know, it's a, you know, it's a hundred thousand dead Americans, and I will go wherever, you know, I'm called. Chris Rock and Rosie Perez will be appearing in a statewide public service announcement, trying to remind New Yorkers to wear face coverings and to get tested. Live on the Upper West Side, Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, Andrew, thanks so much for that new info there. And New York City leaders are asking Mayor de Blasio to install 40 miles of new bus lanes. Four of the city's borough presidents sent a letter to the mayor calling on him to fast track plans because of this pandemic. They fear that New Yorkers will be reluctant to take the subway as the city reopens, that private car services might cause more traffic and hold up bus service. Those borough presidents also say they want to shorten the commute time for essential workers. On Staten Island, crowds cheered as a defiant tanning salon owner opened his doors, not waiting to get the green light from the city or the state. Moments later, the NYPD shut that salon down and threatened to shut its doors for good. News Force Miles Miller joins us from the Great Kill section of Staten Island with what happens now. It was to be the grand reopening of this tanning salon, but instead it was shut down within minutes. With supporters chanting his name, renegade businessman Bobby Cantone opened his tanning salon, defying city and state orders to remain closed amid the coronavirus pandemic. Within minutes, he was forced to close, given a summons by the NYPD. They were going to take my license away and have the health department come here and shut me down immediately. I'm in enough financial burden. I can't have my license taken away. Cantone said he was opening his tanning shop because, frankly, he's been burned by the city's requirement that only essential businesses remain open. Who's to say who's essential? 
We've been doing this, we follow their rules, literally. They keep bringing, putting back the goalpost. They don't give us a date. No date for reopening from the mayor today, but he did provide a tongue lashing. It is idiotic to try and open a business today that will be legally allowed to open in as little as a week or two. It makes a lot of sense to City Councilman Joe Borelli, who says businesses across the borough are going bankrupt. The solution lies in one thing happening, and that's reopening businesses, big and small. Nick Orlando, who owns this kickboxing gym a few doors down from the tanning salon, says it's about survival. But now it's time to, to open for all of us. I mean, we all have amounts to feed and, and responsibilities. So. The mayor has said businesses won't get a day or two heads up when they are cleared to reopen. It's only going to ruffle feathers here on Staten Island. That's where we are. Miles Miller, News 4 New York. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy plans to give more guidance on the state's gradual reopening tomorrow. Now, he made those comments today as he announced 66 new deaths from COVID-19, also more than 1,200 new positive cases. The governor also stressed the importance of getting tested, adding that the state now has 208 testing sites available. New Jersey right now ranks third in the nation for the amount of tests per residence, Chuck. Connecticut has launched its first COVID-19 mobile testing program. It's going to provide free testing at 19 locations in the coming weeks. The idea is to expand access to testing so that anybody who wants a test can get one at no charge, with no appointment, and no prescription. The testing sites will pop up in parts of Hartford, East Hartford, Bloomfield, and Windsor, and they'll be available through at least June 18th. Well, one day into Long Island's Phase 1 reopening, Nassau County launched its own Open Streets program. They closed county roads to give residents more space to dine outside. In neighboring Suffolk County, some retail businesses are demanding that they be allowed to open right now. News Force Greg Sergal in Lake Grove now with the story. Luann Thompson is ready to again welcome customers inside her Bellport framing shop. But that's still not allowed under New York's reopening plan. And Thompson doesn't understand why. I'm fully prepared to take one customer at a time and take precaution with mask and hand sanitizer. And I don't see why we can't do that. Frustration like that has reached a boiling point in this downtown of small businesses on Long Island's South Shore. Store owners wonder why their operations are being limited, while big box stores have been allowed to welcome crowds of customers throughout the pandemic. So we're asking for a little fairness and equity. Brookhaven town officials today urged Governor Cuomo to allow small businesses to reopen fully now with safety restrictions. We're business people. We're not idiots. and We're not children. Uh, I believe we could... Uh, do, it, do a good job at getting back into business. James Avino is a restaurant owner who believes that even eating establishments could reopen right away. I can tell you in this state, there are no different standards of safety. What is safe to reopen uh, is safe. Every summer in this waterfront community, the population swells and businesses generate a big chunk of their revenue for the year. The prospect of losing that, business owners say, is devastating. We need to open up the restaurants and the businesses, 100%. This restaurant owner thinks that businesses have learned how to keep customers and staff safe, and now they just have to be allowed to put those lessons into practice. Greg Sergal, News 4 New York.